Here's a problem for mom. There are two points and we want to find the exponential equation that goes to those points. So what we want to do is find an equation, a function. y is a function of x. y is equal to a times b to the x power so that these two points um, satisfy that equation. So let me think about those two points on the graph. The point minus 3 and 4 over 125 is going to be very, very close to this x-axis. And the point 2, 100 is going to be quite a ways above the x-axis. I'm not trying to build a real accurate graph here, but uh, if if this is 100, then 1 is very, very small here. And this curve is going to be, we know what a, an exponential curve looks like. It looks kind of like that. But what we know about this exponential curve is it has this equation, and it goes through these two points. So what we need to do is find out what a and b are, and then we'll have this, quad, this uh, exponential function. We know that we're looking for an exponential function that goes through this point. So when y is 4 over 125, then b needs to, then x needs to be a, a negative 3. So we get that equation. Because we need this equation to go through this point, we know that 100 has to be equal to, oops, there's a typo error here. So because this function has to go through this point, then when y is 100, then x has got to be 2. So we've got this equation. Now, as a general rule of thumb, whenever you have an equation with two unknowns, we, we need to figure out what a and b are. Then you're going to need two points to find those. If you had three unknowns, you'd need to have three points and so on. So now we just need to solve these equations to find the a and b that make both of them true. So let's begin by solving this equation for, well, yeah, let's, let's see, solve this equation for A. So now think about this for a minute. Dividing both sides by B squared, maybe I should have written that one in as an example. Let's, let's do that. So solving this equation for a, I'd want to divide both sides by b squared, so a is equal to 100 over b squared. And I'm going to readjust that because that b squared on the bottom could be a b to the minus 2 on top. So if this equation goes through this point to 100, then a has to be equal to 100 times b to the negative 2 power. So let's take that value of a that we've found and plug it into this other equation. So what we're doing here is that we know that a is this amount, so in this equation we're going to replace that a with this 100 b to the negative 2. So there's a times b to the negative 3. Now all that here are b's, and we can use some properties of exponents to begin to solve for the b that makes that true. So what we want to do at this point is find out what b is. This really means 4 1 25ths is equal to 100 divided by b to the 5th power. So maybe we'll multiply both sides by b to the 5th. I'm running out of room, so I did two steps at once. When I multiplied both sides of this equation by b to the fifth power, so that would make b to the zero power, which is just one, and that would leave us with 100 here. But I also multiplied both sides of the equation by 125. So I've got 100 times 125 is equal to 4b to the fifth, and therefore b to the fifth is equal to 100 times 125 divided by 4. Now this 4 will go into 100 uh, 25 times. Okay, so b to the fifth is, b to the fifth is 25 times 125, 
And all of these, if we begin to factor them, let's think about that for a minute. 25 is really 5 times 5. And 125 is 5 to the third power, so b to the fifth has got to be 5 to the fifth power. Whoa. Then if I took the fifth root of both sides, then I discover that b has got to be 5. Okay, so I'm halfway to knowing what this equation is. I'm looking for an equation, y is equal to a times b to the fifth power, that goes through these two points. So I looked at the equation of those two. Uh, I looked at what would have to happen. 4 over 25 would have to be equal to a times b to the negative 3 power. And 100 would have to be equal to a times b to the second power. If, if, uh, if this equation went through those two points, we solved one of the equations for one of the unknowns, substituted that value into the other equation, and clean that up and we now know what B is so now we need to find what A is. Go back to these two equations that we've got. Let's choose this one because we know what B is. Now we can find out what A is. So 100 is equal to A times B to the second power but we know that B is 5 so that's A times 5 to the second power. We can now solve this equation to find out what a is equal to. 100 is equal to 25a, that's what that's saying, so I'll just need to divide both sides by 25. Okay, so b squared is 25, I'm just dividing both sides by 25, and so therefore a has got to be 4. Okay, my workspace is getting kind of messy here, but kind of think about what we did. We looked at these two points that this equation needed to go through. If this is an x value and this is a y value, then we'd get this equation. With this x value and this y value, we get this equation. We solved one of those equations for one of the variables, plugged that value into the other equation for that variable, solved that equation for b. Now we know what b is. We come back to the other equation and uh, worked out to find out what a is. So the exponential equation, the exponential equation that goes through these two points is y is equal to 4 times 5 to the x power. So let's go back to the problem, y is equal to 4 times, I'm sorry, times 5 raised to the x power. And notice that it kind of checks the syntax for us. It's saying that, yeah, we've written something that it can understand. 4 times 5 to the x power. Let's check and see how we did. Ah, got it right. Terrific. Okay, good luck.